it's a 20 minute segment, 18 minutes of action, mostly brawling all around the arena. Meltzer would say, uh, Vince McMahon did the commentary and believe correctly. So that much of the audience would be curious channel switchers yeah. who weren't familiar with the WWF and the two men and commented along those lines. Still, there's a reason movie fight scenes are usually limited to about two minutes because much of this match got redundant <laughs> and the commentary was too preachy and condescending about what the WWF is trying to portray itself as and who the characters are. So I'm curious, did you, is this something where you go sit down and watch the final version with your family during the super bowl or no, no, because I was hustling to try to make it home. I was actually, I actually watched it in the airport during a layover and it's pretty telling that, uh, you know, when I came up, I said, Hey, can we watch you? You know, literally halftime of the Super Bowl when uh, my flight lands and I go running over the closest bar. I said, can you put the WWE on? And so we had a bunch of people in there who were not familiar with WWE, but they were selling, you know, what we were doing up until the huge bag of popcorn, which, you know, rock sold, you know, almost Owen Hart, like, you know, yes. with the knees buckling. And then right away, the suspension of disbelief was over as these fans, you know, just not fans, football fans, but, Oh, come on. Popcorn wouldn't hurt. So, uh, look, it, it was, a, you know, you're trying something different. Uh, you learn from your mistakes. Uh, WWE has, has gone on to do some incredible cinematic things. Uh, they can be a lot of fun. And this one was fun. But, uh, yeah, as far as the redundancy, uh, I guess uh, it's all, all valid. But I still think it made quite an impression on people who watched it. And most people are only going to remember, you know, rock being funny and the ending of the match to be quite frank. The things that uh, Meltzer remembered are at one point rock taking a, a drink of the Jack Daniels and Vince claiming it's not real liquor. Uh, <laughs> rock, rock would never drink liquor. Right? Yes. Yes. And, and then, uh, Meltzer would say it ended up backstage with the food and the guys selling shots for the razor sharp popcorn. Uh, finally, they end up in the back of the building. Mankind drops a fort lift with beer kegs onto rock's chest with the cameras, not showing the obvious lack of impact and mankind jumps on top for the pin and the second title reign. But the thing that stands out the most to me is the, the bump you took down the stairs. I mean, it was like 40 yeah. rows of seats. You're doing this just two days after the Royal rumble. My goodness, man, the, uh, Rank that for me on the reward risk reward ratio. I mean, that has to hurt like a son of a gun to go down all those stairs. Yeah. I mean, the key to a good stair bump, and I'm not condoning this again for anyone is that you want to get going so fast that you're not really making that much impact with any of the stairs. So I'll take you back to the Georgia mountain center where they had like four flights of stairs in the corner of the building, all going down a big wide stairway, you know, at least 12 feet wide. And, uh, I had a match that night. Uh, this is uh, Gainesville, Georgia, not Florida, Georgia Mountain Center. And Dusty starts reminiscing, gets his far away look. He goes, I remember this time I'm wrestling Harley Race at the Tampa Armory, and we go up to the top of that bleachers, and I give Harley a shot, and he just tumbled the ass over tea kettle all the way down. Then he turns to me and says, I'm not saying I want you to do that. And I look at him and I go, I can do that bump dream. I can do that bump. And it wasn't until I was on my way home because I lived in Atlanta where I was like, he knew I was going to say that. Like, he wanted me to say that. And so that bump, uh, because I was going super fast, uh, didn't hurt as much as the one where I got all tumbled and tangled. Like, this. yeah, I, I was hurting for, you know, at least a week after the uh, empty arena match. And it's, and it's worse when there's no crowd there, you know, when you don't have the... Uh, the crowd really adds to the adrenaline. Well, you're going to get your second world title win here at this point. Both of them have been taped, but you won the world title in December. You win it again in January. I think it's going to air in February, but you're a two time WWE champion. And that leads us to a last man standing match at St. Valentine's day massacre, but you're not in the main event. Once again, it's stone cold, Steve Austin and Vince McMahon in a cage match. Um, Last man standing. Is that a good blow off considering all that's happened with you guys in your story so far? Well, it was, you know, it was supposed to be the blow off. And then we ended up having a match, uh, on raw the next night. Um, 
yeah, this is where they made the decision not to do the triple threat uh, with me, Steve, and Rock, and to do uh, uh, a singles main event with Steve and Rock. Um, so going into Last Man Standing, that uh, Rocky Two finish made sense. If I'd known I, you know, one day later, if I'd known I wasn't going to be in the main event, I would have put him over cleanly so that he'd be as strong as possible going into uh, Mania with Steve. Let's talk about how you're all over Sunday night heat. You were just before the Royal rumble. Of course, that's where they got you to say the words. I quit and then played it back yeah. against you. But here before St. Valentine's day massacre, they're doing some silly segments with Bob Backlund, iron Sheik, and your old pal, Dominic Danucci. Yeah. What can you tell us about these, uh, these segments? Uh, you know, what? Uh, the heat was, a that was a handy tool to have right before the pay-per-view to try to get last minute buys. But uh, just a month before I, you know, they wanted me to have a heat match with, uh, uh, viscera. And I thought that was just a bad idea, you know, because you know, your big reaction, uh, should be for the pay-per-view, not the, you know, the secondary show. Um, so, uh, that's one of those times where I, you know, we really, really insisted that something not take place just uh, for the sake of the, the main event match in this one, um, remind me of the subject, Conrad, well, the skits, Dominic Danucci, Bob oh, Backlund, Sheiky yeah, baby. You know, I mean, the skits, <laughs> that's not, it wouldn't have been my choice to get ready for a really serious match, but they were fun. You know, Bob says, uh, don't exacerbate me. And I said, I would never exacerbate before a big match. <laughs> Bob said, nobody, nobody should. And, you know, the Sheik, you know, that was fun. And Dominic, where he's like, uh, one day, Mickey, you were going to be the champion. And I look at him, I go, I am the champion. I love that. <laughs> I am the one day. I am the champion. So I remember it being fun. I don't think it helped a lot, but I don't think it hurt. The segments end with Backlund insisting you run the stairs to get ready, but the rock blindsides you. And instead of oh, yeah. nailing you with 15 chair shots, he's going after your knee. The idea being, how can you win a last man standing match? If you can't actually stand, I can't stand That's right. So, uh, he did focus a lot of his, uh, offense in the match on that knee, uh, and included, uh, you know, him throwing the stairs. <laughs> I mentioned, I think in the second book, that, uh, you know, a lot of my, you know, creative ideas had been co-opted. You would see them show up in uh, WCW, uh, you know, even guys in Japan uh, were doing a few things. But, uh, yeah, I, look, I took the double arm DDT from Kobashi. I took the leg drop over the bottom rope from Johnny Ace. So it's not like we don't all borrow from each other, which is fine. Um, but in this case, uh, nobody ever did the, hey, let's do that stairs, you know, where the guy throws them over the top rope onto your knee. Uh, I was really hurting. I can't remember if I had a knee issue going into it um, and wanted to uh, exacerbate that or if uh, it was injured during the match. But I know, you know, it was hurting for sure afterwards. <laughs> 